Hello everybody, this is me, Johan here. I've been using this Google Pixel 2 XL as my primary device over the past two and a half years almost. How is it today in 2020? Has it held up well? Is it even worth keeping in 2020? This is my Google Pixel 2 XL real review in 2020. One of the things I really enjoyed using on this phone has been its always on display. The word that comes in my mind while explaining the always on display is just thoughtful. I mean, just look at it, just the time, then you have the day, the day, the temperature outside, the notifications from the various apps, and then right beneath it, you have the battery percentage. Even above the thoughtfulness of this always on display is its actual efficiency. I can just switch it on and switch on my 4G and Wi-Fi and just leave the phone in idle and it barely sips any battery. There are many manufacturers that have the always on display on their smartphones, but the problem is the efficiency is just terrible. For example, on the Samsung smartphones, many of them have the always on display, but you know, the phone just drains so much of its battery. I mean, most people who have the Samsung smartphones with always on display land up disabling it, but Telling you the truth, for two and a half years, it's not given me one problem till now and Google have really nailed the efficiency game over here. Another thing I really appreciated on this phone was the actual size of the display. The display is a 6 inch display, so one handed usage was very very comfortable on this phone. In all honesty, I have had no complaints with this phone's display. Yeah, there was this initial complaint that if you tilt the phone like this, it does have a blue tint. And yes, for the price at which these guys sold this phone, that was inexcusable. But nevertheless, I've never faced any issues with the display. I'm obviously not going to watch my videos like this. I'm going to watch them like this. So display quality has been good. It's not been the greatest, but I cannot say it, is a ter it has been a terrible display. It's been a decent experience overall. Under direct sunlight, like I am right now, you need to crank this phone's display brightness, as you guys can see, all the way up to 100%. Believe me, if you do not crank this phone's display all the way up to 100% under direct sunlight, you cannot even see this display under direct sunlight. I just felt Google should have increased the overall brightness of this phone's display, and they should have done that. Uh, as the overall brightness of this phone's display, even at 100% brightness under direct sunlight, has never been the best experience. A single rear camera on this phone makes it look outdated uh, to 2020 standards. The rear camera is 12 megapixel by the way. The selfie camera is all but just 8 megapixel. The highlight of the Pixel continues to be its cameras. The pics are vivid and punchy and the already amazing image quality has gotten even better over time with updates. It's the ideal point and shoot camera experience without any fuss. The addition of night mode has just added to the already good low light performance, translating to now great low light performance. In terms of build quality, how has the phone held up? See, the rear of the phone has had no damages whatsoever. The sides again, no damage. The volume button, the power button. But there is one tiny display problem over here. And there is a small scratch over here. I don't think you guys will be able to see it. I put a screen guard to protect this phone's display. For most of its life, I did use a tempered glass. There is a small scratch over here. And this had happened when I initially got the phone. The first four days that I used the phone, uh, I wasn't getting tempered glasses uh, locally. So due to that, uh, Within the first four days of using the phone, uh, the phone landed up getting a small scratch. It's not a very big scratch, a tiny scratch over here. So this has been the only evident damage. Otherwise, the phone looks as good as new. There is a reason why this phone has held up really well. And that is because I used this phone uh, with a TPU case throughout its life cycle. The TPU case I'm currently using on this phone is a Spigen TPU case. As you guys can see, the build quality is really impressive and the fit on this phone is really, really good. The first TPU case I used on this phone lasted for an impressive two years and three months. This Pigeon TPU case is way better than the one I used previously and it was a thousand rupees when it launched. Now you can get it as low as 600 rupees on Amazon. I'll put the links to purchasing this TPU case in the description below. Now, in terms of performance, this phone did come with the Snapdragon 835 optical processor along with the Adreno 540 GPU and 4 gigs of RAM inside. Alright, how is the performance of a two and a half year old phone held up? I'll tell you guys one thing, it's the consistency that I have appreciated more than the speed. To tell you the truth, the speed has been incredibly fast and with Android 10 it's become even faster. I'll just showcase it to you guys, for example, getting into Telegram, check out the speed over there. Getting into Instagram, see how instant that is. Getting into Facebook, 
It just opens up every app so instantaneously. You know, after using a Pixel phone, going back to any other Android phone, it might have way more superior hardware compared to this. For example, the OnePlus 7 last year that I had reviewed, that had way more better hardware compared to this. But telling you the truth, in terms of consistency, I did not find that phone as consistent as the Pixel in terms of speed. And I got to tell you guys one thing, the main reasons behind this is Google sending monthly security updates on this phone every month, at the beginning of every month. So that's the main reason why this phone has remained really smooth. In terms of gaming, uh, I did play PUBG and Asphalt 9 on this phone on certain occasions and it played the games fine. This is not a gamer's phone by any means. If you want a gamer's phone, look somewhere else. The main reason behind it not being a great gamer's phone is because of the small amount of RAM, just 4 GB of RAM in this phone. If Google had gone with 6 GB of RAM, this phone would have been really good for even gaming. But nevertheless, the performance has stood the test of time and I'm pretty sure till it keeps getting uh, the security patches all the way till 2021, it will continue to remain fast. So huge thumbs up and it has, it has been a really, really pleasurable side of using this phone, the performance. One area where the Pixel 2 XL has improved drastically has been uh, in terms of its RAM management. When I first got this phone, one of the biggest gripes I had with this phone was with its RAM management because the RAM management was really bad. And to keep in mind, this phone does come with just 4 GB of RAM inside. But after it received the Android 10 update, I gotta tell you guys one thing. There has been a drastic improvement in RAM management. I'll just showcase it to you guys right now. This was just kept running in the background. As you guys can see, it just opened the way it did. And yeah, you can see this other app is kept in memory, Facebook. See, most of the apps uh, that are kept in the background are kept in memory for a good period of time. And I must say one thing, it's very rare that a device uh, improves over time or over its duration of usage. And the Pixel 2 XL in this department has improved significantly. Were there any problems that I faced on this phone? In terms of app crashes, I rarely had any app crashes on this phone. But to be honest, extremely consistent performance on this phone. And on Android 10, I've not faced a single app crash till now. Uh, one problem though, in October of 2019, when I had updated this phone to its October security patch, the rear camera of this phone uh, uh, stopped working. The rear camera on this phone had to be uh, replaced. So that's the only one small problem that I did go through with this phone. Fortunately for me, the rear camera was replaced for free as this was a device that did come with a two-year warranty. And the best part of this is this is a, a US piece and I'm living in India. And the warranty is applicable worldwide. So I was really surprised by that. And due to that, uh, the rear camera, as mentioned, was replaced for free. It was an executive from Google came home, took it, and I got the phone back in just three days time. So a huge thumbs up over there. If there is one thing on this phone that was hyped by a lot of YouTubers was the performance of its fingerprint scanner. See, it's fast and consistent most of the times, as I can just display it to you guys right now. But the problem is the second a bit of dust or a bit of something lands up over there, it just fails to read my fingerprint. So in terms of reliability, I've not been too happy with the performance of this phone's fingerprint scanner. If there's one thing I've really loved on this phone, it's been these dual speakers. Uh, it's been set to 100% volume right now. It's crisp and clean and overall a really good experience. To today's standards, these aren't the loudest stereo speakers you can get out there. But nevertheless, they are still an excellent pair of speakers and they have held up really well. And to tell you the truth, I've very rarely used the USB Type-C to connect to you headphones or even Bluetooth headphones on this phone because the speaker on this phone has been adequately loud just by itself. All right, then moving on to a really important aspect of any phone. How has the battery life of a two and a half year old phone held up? Has it gone down drastically? Well, I think that's the answer most of y'all would have expected. But telling you the truth, the battery life on this phone has held up really, really well. It's been just rock solid. Uh, after receiving the Android 10 update, I'll just show you guys a few statistics. As you guys can see, I went very heavy on this phone on this occasion. Uh, 14 hours of standby time, 14% of battery left, and a very respectable 4 hours and 42 minutes of screen on time. On this day, I mostly used 4G. And on another day, I'll show you another stat. Yeah, As you guys can see, I got a 
standby time of one day and one hour. That's about 25 hours of standby time. 16% of its battery is still left and an extremely respectable screen on time of 5 hours and 48 minutes. So that would have given you guys an idea. If you guys play games, the phone will easily still last you an entire working day with a screen on time of four and a half to five hours with 4G and Wi-Fi mix. And if you do not play games on this phone, you can easily get one full day of battery backup on this phone with a screen on time anywhere between five and six and about hours of screen on time. The main reason for this phone's battery holding up really well is again thanks to its fast charger. The fast charger on this phone takes two hours and 20 minutes for to charge this phone from 0 to 100%. So that's one of the main reasons why the battery cells aren't dying very quickly on this phone. And then again, I'm an extremely responsible charger. I make sure I charge the phone only once a day on an average. All right, now coming to the verdict side of things. This phone has two major plus points going forward. It is gonna receive Android 11 uh, sometime this year when it launches immediately. And to tip it off another year and a half of security patches as well so you will receive security patches all the way till 2021 october at least so whoever owns a pixel 2 xl right now and if you're planning on changing the phone uh, i would not recommend you all to change the phone anytime now until and unless you're you are a heavy gamer if you're a heavy gamer look somewhere else but if you just need a phone that will do the basics right and if you're still using the phone you can very well use the phone all the way till the end of 2021. so that's it for me today guys I hope you guys liked the video. If you loved the video, I'd appreciate it if you guys could give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and do hit the notifications icon so that you guys get notified with the latest and greatest videos the second they are uploaded on YouTube. By me. So what else can I say? Wishing all of you a tremendous day ahead of you. Ciao for now.